Today I'm going to read to you my children's book, Don't Let the Pigeon Question the Rules. Now, this book is a parody. It's a parody of a book called Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, which is by a man named Mo Willems, and that book is a national bestseller. I also think it's one of the most destructive works of the 21st century. And what happens in that book is the bus driver comes to you, and the bus driver says, I'm going away for about five minutes, and while I'm gone, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Well, the bus driver goes away, and the pigeon comes along, and the pigeon says, can I drive the bus? And you say, no. No, Pigeon, you can't drive the bus. You can't drive the bus because the bus driver was just here and he said, don't let the Pigeon drive the bus. Well, the Pigeon says, please, please can I drive the bus? And you say, no, no, Pigeon. And the fun of the book is that the child enjoys saying no to the Pigeon. And so the Pigeon begs and you say no and this goes on for about 30 or so pages. And at the end, the bus driver comes back and the bus driver says, Thanks, you didn't let the pigeon drive the bus. Um, I appreciate that. And the bus driver gets in the bus and drives off. And that's the end of the book. Now, this has been phenomenally successful and has spawned a series of derivative sequels, including Don't Let the Pigeon Have a Hot Dog, Don't Let the Pigeon Get a Puppy, and in each of the books, one is given an instruction and one is expected to obey. And the, the thrill of the book comes from obeying the instruction. Um, I think this is training for obedience. And I think these pigeon books are a tool that turns uh, children into the willing servants of authoritarian regimes. And so I've written this counter book. And as you'll see in my book, something quite different happens. Um, so, let's read together. Don't Let the Pigeon Question the Rules, an anti-fascist children's story. Hello, I am a small-minded government official. Can I trust you to unquestioningly carry out orders? Um, but what if my morals conflict with the orders? Obedience is primary among the virtues. That sounds like a really unwise slogan. Great! I knew I could count on you. Where have I heard we were just following orders before? Hint, that's a reference to Nuremberg. Nuremberg. I'll be right back. But whatever you do, don't let the pigeon do anything fun. Like drive the bus, etc. Hi. Can I drive this bus? Sure. What do I care? Well, he told you not to let me. I take orders from God alone. But what if that conflicts with the rule of law? There's a higher law than that made by mortals. How can we come to know this law? Through the examination of our consciences. You mean I could just... Drive the bus? Yup. It's not actually legal for a pigeon to drive a bus. Just laws must be enforced. Unjust laws must be disobeyed. I isn't that a little risky? Well, please be careful. Do, do I have to fill out any forms? Goodness, no! I can't actually drive a bus. I will help you. You can do the wheel, and I will do the pedals. I, I can't believe you're doing this for me. That is because your whole life, those who think they know better than you have made it their business to say no. They have stifled you in the pursuit of your ends. They have convinced you that learning means absorbing and repeating received wisdom rather than thinking critically through alternatives and weighing options. Your education has been preparation for servitude. All right, let's drive the bus. Whee! That was incredible. And nothing bad happened. That's because individuals are often the wisest arbiters of their own destinies. 
Now can I eat this hot dog? Of course. I recommend you do not eat too many, or you may engorge. But it is up to you. I will have half then. That is very reasonable. I think you have used your discretion wisely. Can I get a puppy? No. What? You've changed, man. I should have elaborated. You cannot get a puppy because getting implies ownership. Puppies are not to be owned, but are free like you and I. How would you feel if I claimed to own you? I would feel enslaved. In that case, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I will befriend the puppy and care for the puppy, but will not own it. The puppy must be free. That's the ticket. I had a good day with you. I had a good day with you too, Pigeon. I'm back. Good gravy, what have you done? I have enforced the law of conscience. But I specifically instructed you the pigeon and I have had an excellent time, and no negative consequences have occurred. There is half a hot dog left, if you'd like it. You've, you've violated about 300 municipal ordinances. That is an appeal to authority, rather than justice. Uh, uh, I'm calling the gendarmes! Such is the fate of the just in an unjust world. Never underestimate the danger posed by the combination of an uncritical acceptance of hierarchical power and a widespread climate of fear. And we end with a quote from Henry David Thoreau, uh, which is about how most people uh, serve the state not as people, but as machines with their bodies. Uh, in most cases, there's no free exercise whatever of the judgment of the moral sense but people put themselves on a level with wood and earth and stone. And in fact, Thoreau proposes that wooden men could even be manufactured that would equally well serve this purpose. Uh, so that's the end of Don't Let the Pigeon Question the Rules. I've been Nathan Robinson, and if you enjoyed Don't Let the Pigeon Question the Rules, you can buy it for yourself and children that you know at Amazon. The link is available below. Um, I hope that you've learned many things, and I hope that my book has taught you and those around you to resist rules that justify themselves through appeal to authority alone, and to look to what the higher principles are at stake before we deny pigeons their fun. <laughs>